being gone Is I can watch the game all day long And I can stretch my legs out in the bed Extra pillow underneath my head I don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside of lonely I got a lot more room for my stuff And I only have to wash one cup I can stay up late and play my guitar And the groceries go twice as far I don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside lonely Your girlfriends ain't ringing the phone off the wall I never have to hear from that mother-in-law Ain't cut the grass since the middle of June I smoke a big cigar up in my living room Don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside of lonely Pile up right by the door Eat pizza and ice cream three times a day Cause I ain't worried about watching my way I don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside of lonely Yeah man, just think about all the good things about you being gone Stretch out out here at home. Hey man, come on in. Don't mind the muddy shoes on the white carpet. She ain't here. You hungry? Hey man, I got some food if you want to eat. I got a microwave oven with little pictures on the front of it. You just pick what you want to eat and push the button. And it will cook it for you. Yeah, man, you can smoke that cigar up here in the kitchen. Just use that vase over there. Need something to drink? We got beer, bourbon, whiskey, scotch, Diet Coke, Fanta. Yeah, man, I bet you've been on the road for a minute. Bathroom's right down the hall. Switches on the left, doors on the right. Just remember to leave the lid up. Leave it up. Hey everybody, welcome to Wednesday Night Facebook Live. I'm your host, Brian Nova. And we're so glad you decided to join us this evening. Uh, and what an evening it is. We've got some wonderful folks joining us, uh, especially my dear, dear friend, the world-renowned, world-class musician, flautist, saxophonist, arranger, composer, the great Tom Keelingside is going to be joining us here in just a little bit. So, of course, each week we always wonder, what are we going to be playing for everybody? 
week, I guess it was, or maybe over the weekend, uh, Sony and I were crazy through the television set. We saw uh, one of my favorite to- uh, movies from uh, back in yesteryear with the great Frank Sinatra and Kim Novak, uh, Pal Joey. So, uh, kind of on a Rodgers and Hart kick, so I thought we'd do a couple Rodgers and Hart songs for you. Here's uh, one of them from that very movie. She gets too hungry for dinner at eight. She likes a theater, but never arrives late. She never bothers with people she dates. That's why that lady, she's a tramp. Won't go to Harlem and emeralds and pearls. Doesn't like crap games with barons and earls. Won't dish the dirt with the rest of those girls. That is why the lady, she's a tramp. She loves the free, free fresh wind in her hair. Life without care. She's broke, but it's soak. Hates California because it's cold and it's damp. That is why the lady, she's a tramp. Everybody's having a great week. Uh, first and foremost, of course, right here, our tip jar. T- check it out. PayPal.me, BrianUp.com. Helps keep the cause and the wheels greased and the cause rolling forward. 
We could certainly use your help, folks. Over here, we have our YouTube channel. Make sure you go and subscribe. I know there's a lot more out of you that have not hit the subscribe button yet. So please go to YouTube, subscribe, tell them you like us. And, uh, and by the way, for those of you that are uh, even questioning any of this, we put up every show that we do and every uh, music video that we record up on YouTube. So you can go to my YouTube channel, which is right here, um, and see all the past shows. If you miss one, miss a part of it, you can certainly uh, go there and check it out. And of course, you can see over 100 of the videos we have shot. This is our 32nd show. So over the last 32 shows, we've shot over 130 videos. And uh, you can go check them out on our YouTube channel. So uh, it's a great archive and a great place to keep track of uh, who, what, where, and when. A uh, couple other things out there for everybody. We want to say hi to all our pals up in Seattle. Uh, I can see that we've got um, some of the our folks from all the way up in uh, the Churchill Room. Good to see you guys up there in the Church Room in Kirkland. And, of course, our friends over at Vertigo Club in downtown Seattle. Hope you guys are staying safe and being careful. Uh, also, all the way down here, of course, our pals at the Mirage Cigar Lounge. Uh, and speaking of Mirage Cigar Lounge, uh, we want to thank um, Kevin Mike because our uh, bird of the day is this wonderful Opus X. I don't know if you can see it, folks, but it is a sight to behold. And uh, yeah, I'm digging into this one a little bit later. So uh, thank you to Kev and Mike and everybody at Mirage Cigar Lounge. And of course, all our pals at PDT. And if I'm forgetting anybody, I'm really sorry. Hey, Georgie from the CR, right on, George. Good to have you with us. George Salas, oh my goodness. One of the original smoking hogs, folks. We have, we have a, uh, what would you call it? I was a, a, a cigar smoking motorcycle riding club here out of the Palm Desert Tobacco Store uh, with myself and James Bragg and Doc. It's Dr. Stephen Frimsis, George Salas, and, um, and a whole host of others. Uh, Bert from the store there was one of our writers. And uh, anyway, yeah, Smoking Hogs. Miss those days. Those were fun days. And of course, John Connors. Good to see you, John. Die. Um, and uh, I'm going to get on going here because there's so many folks. Brother Leo's on there. exotic boobs as a bar in far Bombay. Come on and fly with me. Let's fly, let's fly away. Come on and fly with me. Let's float down to Peru. In Lama Land there's a one-man band. The other two is flute for you. Come on and fly with me. Let's float down in the blue. Once I get you up there, where the air is rarefied We're gonna glide absolutely petrified Once I get you up there I'll be holding you so awfully near You might even hear a gang of angels cheer Cause we're together with the wise It's such a lovely day You just say those words and I'll beat those birds out Acapulco Bay Yes, it's perfect for a flying honeymoon So they say, come on and fly with me Let's fly away
I can hit you up there Where the air is rarefied We're gonna glide absolutely petrified Once I get you up there I'll be holding you so awfully near You might even hear a gang of angels cheer Because we're together Weather-wise it's such a lovely day you just say those words, we'll beat those birds to Alcapulco Bay. Well, it's a perfect form of flying honey. A boo 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 boo. And so they say, come on and fly with me. Come on and fly with me. Come on and fly with me. Let's fly away. Fly with me, folks. Oh, my goodness. Well, anyway, uh, speaking of flying, I have our next guest, our first guest of the evening that I'd love to bring up. And uh, man, I didn't realize how much I missed him till we did some videos this week. And uh, he was just, uh, yeah, he's a dear friend, a dear pal. He's a fantastic musician. Uh, Tom has a, a world-class saxophonist, flautist, as you will hear in a minute, composer, arranger, educator, and he hails from the Vancouver, BC area, British, Co British Columbia. And uh, I'm telling you, this guy has a resume you won't believe. He has toured with everybody from Dizzy Gillespie, Tom Jones, Natalie Cole, Harry Connick, Van Halen, Mel Torme, Peggy Lee, he's all over the book. John Bon Jovi, I wonder what that was like. And uh, Chaka Chakan, Dion Warwick, David Foster, and many, many, many more. And I'm just so thrilled to have him on the show with us tonight. Uh, let's bring in our lovely guest tonight, Mr. Tom Keenleyside. Tom, are you there? I'm there. I'm there he is. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you good. doing? You sound fantastic, of course. Oh, man. It's all smoke and mirrors at this point. Smoke and mirrors. Hardly. So listen, what you been up to, man? I haven't seen you for a couple of, you know. For quite a long time. For a minute, it's been a minute, yeah. So what have you been up about, to? About a minute. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, uh, Brian, it's 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 been kind of weird because it's all uh, sort of, we're all doing indoor stuff now. Yeah. But uh, I've been actually really busy. I've been doing a lot of um, uh, uh, recording from home, you know, for other people, other projects. And uh, I've done, let's see, I've done about maybe half a dozen, work on half a dozen CDs this year and since wow. COVID started. And uh, maybe, uh, and uh, I've done a bunch of work for the uh, local police department. I do some video work for them. And uh, I've done a, some like sort of grant stuff, you know, like with big orchestras and stuff like that. And I've done quite a bit of a orchestral arranging and I, I, uh, or I did an R, some R and B horn sections, and uh, let's see. I uh, I just I put out a jazz album, which we heard. Is, yeah, let's uh, take a. T we've got a. We've got your cover for the for the jazz album here somewhere. Uh, we're gonna right. find it and pull it's, it up. So tell us about who's on the album here. You got Miles Black. Oh, look at that. It's pretty, it's pretty groovy. Go look at it. It's not, I, I like that album cover. It's uh, beautiful. Yeah, it's Miles. Miles Black, the, the uh, all these guys are just fantastic musicians. They just play like crazy. And I remember uh, Miles. Yeah, I've played with Miles years yeah, ago. Yeah, he was he's, just, he was he's just, just a kid, kid back then, but yeah. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, well, uh, he's a grandfather now, as a matter of fact. So that's how it tells you what's going on with that. I mean, it's really, really, <laughs> really. Wow. But, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's a great guitar player. He's a great string bass player. He plays the piano, spots off the piano. Yeah, he's, he's like a, one of the greatest piano players in Canada. And uh, he is a we have Miles player, Hill. Yeah, yeah we, we got Miles Hill on bass, who was uh, played with Van Morrison for years. And uh, Can turn his volume up uh, my friend Bernie arrives, a, just a fantastic artistic swing and drummer. And he's great. So, and there's a bunch of originals on it, and also uh, uh, so we do some covers too. Oh, so, lovely, lovely. And uh, yeah. you're, you're telling me it's starting to chart, right? 
Yeah, it's we're on in the top thirty in the U.S. jazz charts now. God, that's so, fantastic. Well, I think we're we're twenty one, and it is good because it's it's only been out for three weeks as far as in the states. So you know, it's doing well. Oh, that's fantastic! I'm so happy to hear that. Hey, so listen, you know, give give some of our viewers a little insight of uh, your early beginnings. You know, kind of like what got you started in music. Where were you? Were your was your family musical? Yeah, my you know my mother used to play the piano, but yeah, there were, music was always played in our house, and you know it was a lot of uh, Broadway musicals. You know, you played Pal Joy. I used to listen to that all the time, and uh, My Fair Lady, and all, all those tunes. You know, yeah, like uh, yeah. King and I, and all that. And so I got a huge grounding on uh, what now is the standard repertoire, the Great American Songbook. When I was a really young kid, I mean, I knew all the lyrics to all those tunes and everything, and then. Uh, then I, I started, uh, I took up, well, first of all, I took up the trumpet in high school, and I still play it a little bit, but I don't consider myself a trumpet player already. But uh, I took up the flute, and I used to uh, climb out of my bedroom window when I was 15 years old and go out to the jazz club and, like, come home at 7 in the morning. <laughs> and uh, I did that every Friday and Saturday, like, for three years before I got caught. And, uh, <laughs> and then I went to uh, university, got a degree in the flute, you know, and... Um, just started playing. I, by then, I'd played tons and tons of gigs, dances and bar mitzvahs and all that stuff, you know. So, and then uh, I went through school, and then my career started, and I just started freelancing, and I did play with all those people that you mentioned, which was really exceptional, you know. And standing on, three on, feet, on. Uh, standing three feet in front of Dizzy Gillespie, hearing him warm up, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's wow. crazy. Wow. So uh, you know, uh, and. Uh, and then I started, and then I wrote a lot of TV music. Uh, wrote a lot of jingles. I wrote every Home Depot jingle for about five years. Wow. And, uh, you know, it's been great. And it's, so, it's still going on. And I'm old now, and I'm still working. <laughs> <laughs> Man, well, that's an inspiration for the rest of us, because I can tell you that there's a lot of musicians out there. Yeah, it's really, it's, I never take it for granted, Brian. It's been unbelievable. I remember you told me one of the funniest stories about... Uh, one time, I think it was in Vancouver, where you were opening up for um, Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield. Dangerfield. Can you tell the folks <laughs> uh, that story? Okay, well, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of abbreviate it a bit, but I will tell it. Uh, we uh, Rodney came to the town right in the middle of Caddyshack, so he was like a huge star. And he sold out his two shows, the 7 o'clock show and the 10 o'clock show, in a 3,000-seat theater in about... Uh, two hours so you know wow. it was totally sold out and then the day before the concert the promoter phoned me up and he said i read in the in the contract there has to be a warm-up back for 20 minutes you want to put a trio together and do it and i happened to be working with this trio uh, just playing around playing some original tunes of this piano player so i said yeah okay sure we'll come down there and they offered me a lot of money and it was fun so i went down there and uh, we set up and we uh, kind of did a sound check and then it was time to go on there. And by the time we went on, uh, the audience was drunk, really drunk. I mean, they were hammered and because they came to see Rodney, right? So they were all in a good mood until they announced us. So we walk on the stage and all of a sudden everybody's throwing pennies at us and like, throwing, you know, throwing coffee cups at us and boo. So because they didn't want to see us. So uh we played for 20 minutes and all these pennies are bouncing off my forehead and my flute and everything like that. And uh, <laughs> so we kind of crawled out of there with, you know, our tails between our legs. And we walked down in the dressing room area, and down in the dressing room. And I sit, look in the dressing room and there's Rodney st standing there in boxer shorts and a silk bathrobe and a, and a, and a, and a sling strap t-shirt combing his hair. With, he had patent leather shoes on too. It was great. Combing his hair. He says, hey, you, he says, uh, come in here. He says, you're the band, right? I said, yeah. He says, so I come here. He says, what are they like up there? I said, Rodney, they're throwing things and they're, they're going nuts. They, you know, throwing pennies at us. And they're, you know, half of them went out to the bar and they're yelling at us and everything. He says, oh, they're rude, eh? I said, yeah, they're rude. They're terrible. I said, you know what I found out in this life, kid? I said, what? He says, people are cruel. People are cruel. <laughs> so that was pretty good. <laughs> and uh, so we went out for this for the ten o'clock show. Of course, we had a bottle of scotch in the dressing room, and we managed to get through that thing pretty quick because we knew the ten o'clock show 
they'd be really drunk. Even worse, yeah. Right. So, uh, so we were <laughs> we were at the si- side of the stage, and the announcer comes on, Rodney Dangerfield. But first, the Tom Keenly side trio. Everybody, <laughs> boom, like this, and then. <laughs> Rodney's behind us. He's got a three-piece suit on by this time. And he goes, no, none of us want to go first. And he's pushing us from the back. Get out there. Take your booze like men. He <laughs> pushes us off the stage. That's my favorite line. There we go. Take and then the pennies and the coffee like cup. <laughs> Take your booze like men. Ah, oh, what a great line. Listen, yeah, I want to, uh, if you can stick around for a little bit, Tom, I want to play a couple of our videos here. I'm all, I'm into it, man. Wonderful. So our first video here is just a duet with Tommy and I um, playing a beautiful song um, called "Beautiful Love." So give it a listen. Beautiful. Here we go, Tommy. <laughs>
Yeah, it's on beautiful. Yeah, that's fun, eh? Man, great play with so you. So good, yeah. Oh, thanks, man. You too. I appreciate that. That's great playing with you again after all this time. You too. So, uh, what's the BC scene up up in Vancouver, that area? What's the what's the music scene like up there these days? Anything going on at all? Or you guys have locked down well, like we are here. No, uh, there there there's a couple of things going on. There's a couple of clubs uh, kind of open at about like thirty percent or something like that, and they and they do have uh, there's a place that has jazz every Saturday afternoon uh, for uh, three hours and then, and a place that actually that has jazz seven nights a week but they're uh, you know they scaled all their their patrons back to about 30 yeah. percent or 40 percent or something uh, so there's a little bit going on but you know I, I'm just gonna hang out here <laughs> until until it's kind of over dude I, I want a me. pint of vaccine <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want mine through a straw at least. Yeah, I know okay. uh, I saw someone sent me uh, uh, a video of um, some stuff up in Victoria at uh, Herman's. I used to Herman's. play Herman's forever. Right. And uh, yeah. I know they're kind of doing the same sort of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, th there are a few really great musicians in Victoria. So, uh, you know, they, they kind of keep the ball rolling. Indeed. Kelby Indeed. McNair is a really good drummer, and Ken Lister, a really great bass player. Pablo Cardenas, he's a fabulous Cuban piano player. He's mm. killer. Yeah, so there's there's a few things going on there. Oh, I bet. I bet there are. So, yeah. coming up in your time, who were some of your uh, your influences? I mean, was, were there people that you listened to or someone that really kind of helped uh, throw the light switch to make the move? Well, uh when I was uh, when I was thirteen, I used to walk to school every day with my friend Tony, who still is my friend. I just saw him today at the drugstore, as a matter of fact. And uh, you know, just sixty years later or whatever. And uh, so uh, I used to walk with him to school. And I, I was walking to his house one morning, and his front door was open, and his mother had uh, strange metal arc on, you know, the Dave Brubeck Quartet from the album Time Out. Mm. second cut on the first side and uh he was just finishing off his little opening cadenza and then paul desmond came in he, he came in playing and i heard it and i went that's what i'm gonna do for the rest of my life wow and I'm exactly what, that's exactly what happened and uh i heard that and it was just like it was the throwing the light switch on and uh, I didn't play saxophone back then. I played the trumpet, but uh, I heard it and I went, whatever that is, that's what I'm going to try to do. And then I just devoured uh, the Dave Brubeck Quartet and especially Paul Desmond for years after that. So did you make the move then, over to alto? Yeah, that was, that was uh, and you know, I didn't actually start the saxophone until third year university because I was playing the flute all the way up there and I was doing you know, I was doing classical recitals and that kind of thing. And then uh, in the third year, a friend of mine said, why don't you take up the saxophone? You, know, you got all the fingerings. It'll take you a couple of weeks to actually get a sound out of it and then go out and play some gigs. And that's exactly what I did. So, and it was too hard playing the trumpet and the flute at the same time. So I ditched the trumpet and then I loved the saxophone. And then after that, I heard uh, the album Cannonball en route. Oh, yeah. And it totally blew my head off. It's a cannibal alley. Uh, definitely, I mean, one of the greatest saxophone players ever to live. And man, that album, whole album is a masterpiece. It's just a just a lesson in how to play the saxophone. And uh, so that really had a huge influence on me. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. As cannibal. And then other things, familiar. like other weird things. I used, I used to, I used to, uh, I had a radio, like I, 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 radio right by my bed, and yeah. there was a radio station that used to play uh, uh, progressively more uh, like sort of outside and weirder jazz as the night went on. So it started with uh, candlelight and wine, which would be really, uh, you know, kind of soft jazz, and then gaslight, which was like from eleven to one, which was. Uh, mainstream swing and stuff. He'd play Mose Allison and all that stuff and really great stuff. And then from one to five in the morning, it would be like 
Don Ellis, you know, oh, right. three and one, two thirds time and uh, uh, the Sun Ra Orchestra and all that. So I used to hear that stuff and it just was unbelievable. What an education. I used to fall asleep to that stuff and wake up hearing, you know, uh, uh, electric bath by, you know, Don Ellis and stuff like that because they bring it in my head. So, you know, that's where I get my bath. It's really funny. I can't tell you how many of our guests we've had on that A, had a light switch moment like yours and B, had a radio by the bed. Oh, yeah, right. Did you? I had a radio. Yeah, absolutely. I had a radio, right? You know how the old beds, they had like a little thing in the middle where you could put stuff, books and stuff. And Yeah. Did you have a light radio switch there. moment? I did. I did. I had a light switch moment. I had a couple of them, I suppose, but um, my light switch kept going on and off. But my, 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 major, <laughs> my major light switch moment was uh, two. I, had a, I have, a, I have a, uh, an aural one like yours where I heard something, you know. And, uh, right. It's when I first heard Nat King Cole singing Route 66. I was driving down the freeway and it was just happening. It was just like the, ro the, the, the world opened up to me right in front of me on the road. Oh, I know. That's, uh, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. And the visual one yeah. was uh, uh, my uh, a dear friend of our of the family of mine uh, took me to Jazz Alley when it was up on the Ave in the University District. You probably remember right. those days. And I, I got did, to yeah. see Herbie Ellis there. I was about nineteen. Right. And um, and I I went kicking and dragging. You know, I did, I thought I don't want to go see this old guy. And Herbie was probably obviously younger than I am now, right? But I. At 19, he seemed ancient, and um, yeah, very. And I was just like, "No, nah, I'm not going to do it. I'm gonna, I can't stand here and some guy play Misty all night long." And of course, they opened up with this rip roaring, you know, rhythm changes thing. I had no idea the guitar could be played that way. And yeah, that was, that was the other light switch moment for me. Yeah, right. We fortunate we fortunately had a club in Vancouver called. Uh, we had a few of them, but you know. I got to see some, I got to see the original Ornette Coleman uh, quartet, you know, this is our music quartet with Eddie Blackwell and oh, yeah, Charlie yeah. Hayden and all that. And, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, you know, I got to see Herbie Hancock a bunch of times. I got, I saw a cannibal five times in a row. And then I saw him later too. Saw Bill Evans six nights in a row, you know, Sonny Rollins and all these guys. I mean, Charlie Mingus, it was just, there was some really good, a couple of really great clubs. So yeah. That was good. How cool is that? Yeah. Hey, uh, you got time to stick around for one more video here while I play it? I absolutely do. Cool. Of course. So uh, this is this is a fun tune uh, with yours truly, and of course, and Tom on the flute uh, doing, I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter. Check it out. Perfect. All right, Tommy, here we go. I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter and make believe that it came from one of you. I'm gonna write words so sweet They're gonna knock me off of my feet A lot of kisses on the bottom I'll be glad I got them I'm gonna smile and say I hope you're feeling better And close with love the way That, that, that you do I'm gonna sit right down and write myself a letter And make believe that it came from up above you Come on, Tommy
write myself a letter and make believe that it came from a woman you. I'm gonna write words oh so sweet. They're gonna knock me off of my feet. A lot of kisses on the bottom. I'll be glad I got them. I'm gonna smile and say, I hope you're feeling better. And close with love the way that I bet you do. I'm gonna sit right down and write myself a letter. Yeah, Tom, beautiful. That's right. I remember when that tune came out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, yeah, I remember that tune. Yeah. So what's uh what's what's next on your uh on your schedule, your agenda? Do you have new projects you're working on? Um Yeah, uh, right now I'm working on there's a uh, uh there's a uh composer in Vancouver named Harry Staphylakis and he uh, j he wrote something called uh, a, like a commission work called Source Code which is a spectacularly uh, it's spectacular piece of music actually and it's kind of a combination of uh, it sounds like uh, a heavy metal band meets Frank Zappa meets mm. a big band kind of thing and it's uh, really interesting it's very challenging and so I'm uh, I'm recording all the saxophone parts for that, and uh, so that'll go out with that. And uh, I just finished a record for a friend of mine in the in the desert, uh, a fellow named Scott Carter. Oh right, I've been hearing about that record. Yeah. So I uh, yeah. So um, so I did three uh, three horn arrangements for uh, three tunes on his album, and that it's really a nice sounding record. It's going to be really good. Yeah, I can't wait and, to hear the um, finished product. Yeah, and I'm we're, I'm going to be a grandfather in April, which is pretty funny. Get out of here! Yeah. Wow. It's, it's good. It's Grandpa great. Tom. Grandpa Tom, that's right. Yeah. I have to wear Man. my old flannel long times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to get you smoking and, a pipe uh, or something. Oh yeah, and then other than that, not really. I, I've been doing uh, a lot of work on, we, we bought a house uh, as a investment for a rental. So I've been doing a lot of, you know, a lot of work on that, you know, various, various things, various construction things and stuff like that. So, man, you're a busy boy. You? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. God, Tom, it's wonderful. Well, listen, I can't thank you enough for joining us tonight. What a treat, treat, it's treat always having you. It's a pleasure playing with you, Brian, too, and seeing you again. I haven't seen you for way too long. It's been too long. So, uh, yeah, either uh, we'll see each other after we drink our quart of, uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> a, vaccine, a vaccine, yeah, right. Yeah, a quart of vaccine. Uh, yeah, either Pfizer I'll your... Right, yeah. yeah that's right. A Pfizer and tonic. <laughs> exactly. You're right. I'm going to have a Pfizer, Mar Pfizer Rita. And... Uh... <laughs> And, yeah. and then we're going to, so we're either going to, yeah, us heading up north and seeing you uh, up in your neck of the woods, or maybe you'll make it back down yeah, this please. way to the south soon. Yeah, yeah, I want to see my house again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, if you need any help, give me a holler. I can always drive by. We're not that far away. Hey, I appreciate it, Brian. Thanks give a hug out to Nikki Lee for us, too, as well. And uh, I will. Say hi to Missoni. Hi, Missoni. I will. I will. I'll tell her. And we'll, uh, we'll, okay. we'll talk to you soon. Ah, how fun is that? Man. So make sure, uh, honey, let's put up a CD one more time. Make sure you check out uh, Tom's new CD, which is Fortune Teller. And it is climbing the lists. You can uh, get it on Amazon, iTunes. Check out his new stuff. And, uh, of course, you can always go to 
com, Tom Keenley, or TomKeenleyside.com to his website and see some of his other projects and stuff that he's been working with. He is the man, as they say. Oh, let's see what we got here. Bob Sky, good to see you, Bobby. And Rita. Hey, played uh, Rita played flute in high school. I did not know that, Rita. Yeah, I know. We, there's a lot of things we did in high school we should have kept with. And Mike Leach, good to see you, Mike. Hope you're well. And uh, Deboisha. Looks like you guys might be on the uh, on the road. Here's a beautiful tune. For all we know, we may never meet again. Go make this moment sweet again. We won't say good night till the last minute. I'll hold on my hand. My heart will be in it For all we know This may only be a dream We come and we go Like a ripple on a stream so love, love me tonight, tomorrow was made for some, tomorrow may never come, for all we know.
Yay! I guess no clapping sheep this week. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> anyway, one of my favorite oh, tunes. Ah, look at that. Oh, and the dogs too. Yeah, love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> Who else we got out there? Dennis Crosby. I see miles and miles on that album. Yeah. Dr. Dennis, good to see you. Jerry, yes. Thank you so much. It's great to play with Tom. And uh, where is the boy shed? Greetings from the north and end of I-5. The north end of I-5. Yeah, I guess that's true. Almost all the way up to the end.
little bit of uh, can't take that away from me. Hey, look at that there. Uh, we got uh, the one and only John. So uh, good to see you, John. Nice to have you stop by here. And of course, my pal Norris Cebu Funk. Good to see you guys over there. And uh, <laughs> anyway, we want to thank uh, Tom Keenly Side for joining us today. What a pleasure and a guest to catch up with him and check him out and get a chance to chat with him and find out what's going up there way up in Coover, eh? And of course, a big thank you out to the lovely Masoni. Do we have a Masoni cam today, honey? No Masoni cam today, but uh, maybe we can get some hands, some dogs and sheep clapping for Masoni. Yay! Yeah, Masoni's been putting on a great show here. Yeah, honey, wonderful. And uh, um, who else do we have to thank? Uh, don't forget that we have a Larry Dunlap's Cave Show coming on here uh, on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. And uh, we also want to thank uh, Benedetto Guitars here, of course, our our own maker of guitars here, and Howard and everybody over there. And uh, I guess that's about all the news I have for you guys right now. Uh, we're going to be back next week. Our special guest next week is going to be the one and only Mr. Larry Holloway on bass. Uh, Larry and I go back about 30 plus years. And uh, Larry is um, a descendant of the Red Mitchell School of Bass Playing. And we'll get more into that next week. Just what the Red Mitchell School of Bass Playing is all about. But um, oh, my little brother's asking for Ellington. Ellington, where are you? I think he's on strike, David. Uh, he's... Um, He's got his new coat and jacket, and he's just happy as a clam somewhere else. So anyway, folks, we hope you have a great week out there. Please be kind to each other when you're out and about. I know things are very tough right now with everybody on lockdown, but we will get through this. I promise you. And uh, also, remember, we're going to have our Christmas show. Uh, so you're going to want to tune in the Wednesday before Christmas. We're going to have a big Christmas show here along with um, all of some of our favorite pals over the past seven, eight months. Uh, and don't forget to take a look at our paypal.me, our little tip jar, and of course, our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, be kind out there. Be nice to each other. And remember, when things get you down or looking like it's getting a little dark out there, remember just to keep it swinging. <laughs>